Okay, so let's continue here. And this is Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, Yahweh, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. Joel chapter 2 verse 13 Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to Yahweh your God. For he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. You see that? So again, the Most High Yahweh says to rend your heart and not your garments. That's the reason why we just read how Yahweh searches the heart and examines the mind, right? He does not look on the outward things. Let's go ahead and read that in 1 Samuel chapter 16, starting off at verse 5. Samuel anoints David as king. Samuel replied, Yes, in peace, I have come to sacrifice to the Most High Yahweh. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely Yahweh's anointed stands here before Yahweh. You see that? So even Samuel himself thought that, you know, this man that had great stature and a nice appearance was the one that the Most High Yahweh wanted. But again, right? Yahweh's thoughts are not our thoughts. But Yahweh said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. Yahweh does not look at the things people look at, the things people judge another for. People look at the outward appearance, but Yahweh looks at the heart. Okay? So, this is the reason why we must rend our hearts and not our garments, right? Because why? Well, the Most High Yahweh always tells us this here. In Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 5. It is not because of your righteousness or your integrity that you are going in to take possession of their land. But why? On account of the wickedness of these nations. Yahweh your God will drive them out before you to accomplish what he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Furthermore, understand, you see that? That's the key point because our people got wisdom, they got some knowledge, but they got no understanding. So understand then that it is not because of your righteousness that Yahweh your God is giving you this good land to possess. For you are a stiff-necked people, you see that? So praise the Most High Yahweh because you know why? Each and every one of us is unworthy of understanding the things that the Most High Yahweh choose to reveal to us on a daily basis. All right? But at the same time, we are grateful for it. And you know, this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh says that we will thank Him. All right? We will give thank offerings in the name of Yahweh our God. So again, this is what it's talking about when it says to rend your heart, which is also a precept to this scripture here. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 5. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning will be few for the fire. You see that? This is what it's talking about. All the violent people, those who are given over to bloodshed, those that like to do violence to the Most High House law, every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning. This is why it says this here.
Starting off in Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 5. Suppose there is a righteous man who does what is just and right. He does not eat at the mountain shrines or look to the idols of Yasharal. He does not defile his neighbor's wife or have sexual relations with a woman during her period. He does not oppress anyone. You see that? He does not oppress anyone due to their skin color, due to their language, their nationality, their gender, their sexual orientation, right? He does not oppress anyone but returns what he took in pledge for a loan. He does not commit robbery, which, you know, most high willing we will talk about that. He does not commit robbery, but gives his food to the hungry and provides clothing for the naked. He does not lend to them at interest or take a profit from them. He withholds his hand from doing wrong and judges fairly between two parties. He follows my decrees and faithfully keep my laws, right? The many things of Yahweh's laws, the physical and the spiritual, right? That man is righteous. He will surely live, declares the sovereign Yahweh. Furthermore, suppose he has a violent son who sheds blood or does any of these other things. Though the father has done none of them, he eats at the mountain shrines. He defiles his neighbor's wife. He oppresses the poor and needy. He commits robbery. He does not return what he took in pledge. He looks to the idols. He does detestable things. He lends at interest and takes a profit. Will such a man live? He will not. Because he has done all these detestable things, he is to be put to death. His blood will be on his own head. Okay. That's why we read every garment. Road in blood will be destined for burning, okay? For burning, which goes hand in hand with the scripture here. Isaiah 51, starting off at verse 5. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way. And my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment. And its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. You see that? Most High Yahweh gave you a choice. Life or death. So what's it going to be? Alright. Now let's go ahead and read. Hosea chapter 9 verse 7. Right? Because we read how, you know, Samuel went to Jesse and his sons. And, you know, they, they actually feared. Okay? They feared the Most High Yahweh. They feared, you know, the fact that the Most High Yahweh sent a prophet to them. But that was, you know, back in the days when people actually had respect for the elderly, right? When people actually, you know, feared a prophet, a messenger that was anointed by Yahweh. But now, like it says in Hosea 9 and 7, the days of punishment are coming. The days of reckoning are at hand. Let Yasharal know this. Because of why? Because your sins are so many. And your hostility so great. The prophet is considered a fool. The inspired person, maniac. And let's go ahead and uh, read some things here, right? Because, you know, the most tell you how he tests the heart and examines the mind. This is a scripture from the New Testament. The only time I bring this out in my videos is to expose the lies and to show the contradictions. So let's go ahead and read some. From John 13, starting off at 31. Jebus said, How the Son of Man is glorified, and the Most High is glorified in Him. If the Most High is glorified in Him, 
the Most High will glorify the Son in Himself, and will glorify Him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. And here you go now, right? This is the kicker. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. You see that? This is what Jesus says. But let's see what the Most High Yahweh says. In Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1, if a prophet, or a brother, or another, or one who foretells by dreams appears among you and announces to you a sign or a wonder, and if the sign or wonder spoken of takes place, and the prophet says, Let us follow other gods, gods you have not known, and let us worship them, you must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer. Yahweh your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. You see that? Furthermore, right? Look what it says here. Because, you know, Jesus says, I give you new commandments. But look what it says here. It is Yahweh your God you must follow, right? But Jesus says, if you follow my commandments, then uh, you will be my disciples. But Yahweh says, it is him you must follow and him you must revere. Keep his commands and obey him. Serve him and hold fast to him. You see that? So again, you know, the choice is always yours. All right? Life or death. Verse 5. That prophet or dreamer must be put to death. For inciting rebellion against Yahweh your God, who brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you from the from the land of slavery. That prophet or dreamer tried to turn you from the way Yahweh your God commanded you to follow. You must purge the evil from among you. It's just that simple. You see that? You know, a lot of you people, you know, you don't want to let go of this idol. Well, you're going to do that to your own harm. You're going to continue speaking up for this idol to your very own harm, okay? To your own destruction until you perish off this earth, right? Because why? Because this evil must be purged from among us. That's the reason why you would not belong to the council of Yahweh, nor would you be listed in the records of his people. Most High Yahweh says he's going to treat you just like a heathen, just like a pagan who hates God, okay? Hosea chapter 13 verse 10 Let's start off at verse 9 You are destroyed, Yasharal, because you are against me, against your helper Where is your king, right? Where is your Jebus guys? Your Idoshai, your Hamashiach That he may save you Where are your rulers in all your towns of whom you say, give me a king and princes? So in my anger, I gave your king, and in my wrath, I took him away. The guilt of a party is stored up. His sins are kept on record. That's the reason why the Most High Yahweh says that a lot of these people here would not be listed in the record of Yahweh's people. Why? Because they're too proud to detect their sin. You see that? They know it all. Okay, they're waiting for the Hesel Christos and the Hamashiachs to come. And no, 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 you know, you're wrong. No, the devil got to you if you tell them about their Jeebus guys. You see that? They condemn us if we try to tell them about, you know, their idols. So, you know, hey, the Most High Yahweh sees it all. Okay, leave them be, like the scripture says. So let's go ahead and read, right? In First Samuel, because the Most High Yahweh says, He gave our people kings and He took them away. You know, the Most High Yahweh always give our people what they want. So let's read in 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1. When Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons as Yasharal's leaders. The name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Abijah, and they served at Beersheba. 
But his sons did not follow his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. So all the elders of Yasharal gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. But when they said, Give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to Yahweh. And Yahweh told him, Listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. As they have done, from the day I brought them up out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so they are doing to you. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly, and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. Samuel told all the words of Yahweh to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, this is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his right. He will take your sons and make them serve with his chariots and horses, and they will run in front of his chariots. Some he will assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and others to plow his ground and reap his harvest, and still others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his attendant, which is talking about his officials. He will take a tenth of your grain and of your vintage and give it to his officials and attendants, your male and female servants and the best of your cattle and the donkeys he will take for his own use. He will take a tenth of your flock and you yourself will become his slaves. When that day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king you have chosen. But Yahweh will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and to fight our battles. So let's go ahead and read about that king, you know, that the Most High Yahweh says will take a tenth of your grain, right? A tenth of your olive groves. First Samuel chapter 25, verse 4. While David was in the wilderness, he heard that Nabal was shearing sheep. So he sent ten young men and said to him, Go up to Nabal at Carmel and greet him in my name. Say to him, Long life to you, good health to you and your household, and good health to all that is yours. Now I hear that it is sheep shearing time. When your shepherds were with us, we did not mistreat them. And the whole time they were at Carmel, nothing of theirs was missing. Ask your own servants and they will tell you. Therefore, be favorable toward my men, since we come at a festive time. Please give your servants and your son, David, whatever you can find for them. When David's men arrived, they gave Nabal this message in David's name. Then they waited. Nabal answered David's servant, Who is this David? Who is this son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and water and the meat I have slaughtered for my shears and give it to men coming from who knows where? David's men turned around and went back. When they arrived, they reported every word. David said to his men, Each of you strap on your sword. So they did, and David strapped on his as well. About 400 men went up with David, while 200 stayed with the supplies. One of the servants told Abigail, Nabal's wife, David sent messengers from the wilderness to give our master his greetings, but he hurled insults at them. <laughs>